Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our uh, web presentation of Sicardio 30P version 6. My name is Gunnar Jakobsson. I am the uh, CEO and founder of Sicardio. And yeah, in the next 30 mi minutes, I will give you a, <clears throat> a short status overview uh, over digital certificates. Then I will explain the basic functionality of 30P for those who are, who are not familiar with uh, 30P. And then I will uh, explain the innovation, uh, the new features of uh, 30P version 6. Yeah, if we talk about uh, certificate lifecycle automation, um, we are in a situation where the number of certificates is uh, steadily uh, uh, growing and it is growing uh, significantly uh, at some companies. I heard uh, from one company, I heard they expect a growth uh, of uh, um, yeah, up to 10, 10 on, uh, up to, to 100, factor 100 in the next uh, 10 years they expect. So this is a very, very high amount of certificates that we have to deal with. Um, the top requirements, this is um, a collection of uh, requirements from a Ponemon research. Um, and this is what we also see in our, um, in our uh, talks with our customers. Uh, top requirement is uh, visibility, the, the inventory of all certificates that is required then uh, very important also the automation and this is a, a topic that we are discussing here in this um, session and also the support for, for multiple CAs, not only one CA, two, three, perhaps more CAs that have to be, um, that have to be covered. Yeah, um, there are basically uh, three types of certificates that we deal with in an in an enterprise. These are service certificates that um, that are needed um, for secure uh, communication uh, communication using the SSL TLS uh, protocol. By the way, these are also statistics from Ponemon Research. So we have 74% that uh, that tell us that this is in place in their organization. Then we have device certificates that are used for VPN connections or for device authentication. And then we have user certificates that are used primarily for uh, SMIME, email encryption and signature, and also for uh, user authentication. There are other types of certificates, but I think these are the the most important ones that we deal with from day to day. And then the next question is, where do these certificates come from? Um, if we talk about uh, certificates uh, with communication, uh, for communication with other partners, then we need uh, certificates from a public CA, like for um, public internet web servers, we need SSL certificates from public CAs, or if we uh, do SMIME encryption with partners, we need uh, trust in these SMIME certificates, uh, which is offered by the public CA. Uh, for internal applications like VPN or authentication, typically uh, uh, a private CA is in place. Yeah, and all these uh, kinds of certificates and um, kinds of CAs are managed with our platform. Top key stands for Trusted Open PKI, which handles all phases of certificate lifecycle automation. Uh, Top key is a, is a modular platform, uh, as you can see here. And if we start with 30P, which is the topic of today, a 30P serves for Windows and device auto enrollment. Then we have Cert Push for the provisioning of uh, SMIME certificates to mobile devices. Uh, we have sort of ECMI for the uh, automated enrollment of uh, web server certificates. We have sort of Live for convenient certificate management and user and admin self-services. We have sort of Revoke 
for um, automatic revocation of uh, of uh, certificates uh, from Active Directory objects. Then for the SMIME use case, we have um, the third box, which uh, uh, serves to publish and retrieve SMIME certificates, so uh, you can perform an end-to-end -end encryption with your partners who need your certificates and, and you need the certificates of the partner. And as an extension, we have cert mode, which is used uh, for the retrieval of partner certificates that are uh, searched by the cert box. Um, and cert mode um, um, establishes the retrieval um, of these certificates to mobile devices that don't support LDAP. So this is just a brief overview of the platform, and now we go deeper into the CERDP, the Certificate Enrollment Proxy. The CERDP, uh, basically, it simulates uh, a Windows Enterprise CA. So the CERDP is installed on a server in, uh, in your Active Directory. Um, it, um, it, it will use um, an SQL database. This can be a Microsoft database, MySQL, um, and the um, database is also serving as a key archive for private keys. So um, the CERDP performs a native Windows auto enrollment. So the, there is no software on the clients. The clients will use the standard built-in auto enrollment procedures because they think that they talk with a, uh, with a Microsoft CA. But compared with the Microsoft CA, we have a couple of extended enrollment features that uh, Microsoft does not offer. So, and again, um, 30P um, uh, performs the auto enrollment and independent from the type of certificate, user certificates, server certificates, device certificates, all um, objects in Active Directory can get certificates from CERDP. CERDP has uh, a couple of connectors uh, for uh, certain CAs. This can be on-premises uh, CAs, uh, for example, open source CAs or CA products, or even the Microsoft CA, ADCS, can be connected um, um, in order to perform uh, the auto enrollment via CERDP. Then we have also connectors for um, private CAs in the in the cloud, like um, uh, provided from SwissSign and very popular uh, from AWS, the, the ACM PCA is also connected. Yeah, and then we have a couple of public CAs that are connected, like SwissSign, um, Global Trust, uh, DigiCert, um, SimAuth, this is an old interface of DigiCert, and Covadis. But Covadis has been acquired by DigiCert, uh, so there is no need for this Covadis CA connector anymore. But we offer um, new connectors for GlobalSign, we offer a connector for Sectigo, and we offer also the new um, uh, prioritized uh, API of DigiCert, which is called Search Central. So you are flexible to select from these CAs that you want uh, to, to connect with. Yeah, um, I, 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 I explained to you that the basic enrollment is, uh, is done using the uh, Windows uh, uh, Client Certificate Enrollment uh, Protocol, WCCE. Uh, which is based on DCOM RPC, but we can also use other uh, mechanisms for enrollment. For example, the standard web enrollment feature of Microsoft is supported. We can use the CES services of Windows in order to perform uh, an enrollment for um, non-joint um, uh, computers. Um, then we can perform a uh, device enrollment using the NDAS uh, service. Um, for, by this, we can enroll um, certificates using the SCAP protocol. This is a very famous protocol that is used by uh, network components and also by mobile devices. And uh, using all these interfaces, we can also integrate 
uh, mobile device management systems in order to enroll device certificates to these, uh, yeah, to these mobile devices that are managed by the MDM system. So, th so this is a couple of um, uh, scenarios that you can use CERDP with. And now we start with the um, with one typical scenario at our customers who are using SMIME certificates. Um, this is important to understand the, um, the new features that I will explain later on. So we start with the standard SMIME auto enrollment. The so user logs in to his computer and Active Directory. Uh, then the client will get um, auto en uh, enrollment instructions from group policies. And then uh, it will look for the available CAs and the available certificate templates in Active Directory. OK, and then the, uh, um, the computer says, OK, I need a new certificate based on, on, on this template. Then uh, the computer will uh, perform a keypad generation. Um, 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 a certificate signing request will be created and transferred to CERDP. CERDP will then get further attributes from the user object in Active Directory and it will then transmit these, um, these um, attributes together with the CSR to the connected public CA. The CA will issue the certificate, return the certificate to CERDP. CERTP will optionally uh, perform a key archival. This is done using so-called key recovery agents. So the private key uh, has been submitted in uh, in encrypted form in the in the CSR to CERTP, and CERTP will use the key, uh, the KRA certificates to store the uh, the private key encrypted in the key archive in the database. Yeah, and at, at, at the end, it will return the, the certificate to the, the client, and the client now has this certificate in the Windows certificate store, and it can be used um, by standard applications like Outlook. So Outlook will detect the certificate and use it then for signing and encrypting and de decrypting uh, emails. So, um, so this is an, the native uh, scenario. So we have the native uh, uh, scenario. In the native enrollment scenario, we need a CA that supports the Microsoft uh, template extension. Each certificate template has uh, a specific uh, object identifier, uh, this template OID. And this is uh, this template OID is contained in the certificate that uh, that is issued by a, by a Microsoft CA. So and based on this uh, OID, um, the the client will look if if there is um, um, something to do because it's, if it sees okay, I have to acquire a, a, a new certificate because this certificate will will expire tomorrow. So then it will uh, do a, a lookup based on the OID and perform uh, a certificate renewal request to CERDP. CERDP will uh, forward it to the CA, CA issues the certificate, and then the um, client will get a new certificate. So this is a, the, uh, the renewal which, which needs the, uh, the template OID extension in the certificate. Otherwise, this uh, auto renewal will not work. So the problem is that there exist certain CAs that do not support this uh, template extension in the certificates. So the question is how can we how we ha can we handle this or how can we offer a auto enrollment uh, with this type of uh, CAs? So and what we what we implemented now in version six of CERTP is a server based or group-based auto-enrollment. This means not the client, but CERTP will look in the certificate base database uh, for expiring certificates. And if it detects this, he will, um, uh, he will do the following. He has some configured source groups 
where the, where the user is a member in, and then you will copy the, the, the user to uh, the template enrollment group for this certificate template. So the user from this point of time has auto enrollment permissions. Before that time, he did not, didn't have these permissions. Now he is uh, in that template and the client will detect that there's um, a template, a new template that he should enroll. And then he will perform the, um, um, the enrollment, will generate a CSR um, and will send the uh, CSR to 30P. And then the CA will issue the certificate, but without the template extension. But we don't need the extension because next time the certificate expires, the same procedure will be done. So this is a very interesting feature for if you have a CA, and there are uh, certain public CAs, by the way, that don't support this feature. Yeah, so this is one uh, very, very nice uh, new feature. Then we have other, other new features. Uh, we have extended the, um, the template configuration options. So um, 30P will use templates from Active Directory. So uh, you select a template from Active Directory and you, you have the option to configure further parameters. Especially you can, um, you can select um, uh, a certificate product from your CA. In this, in, uh, here in this scenario, we have the standard products from Swissan listed now. It's very easy now to select just the product. In the past, this was not possible because Swissan had no standardized products, but now they have it and now it's more easy to select from them. Another option is to configure subject parameters like organization, country or so uh, based on a, on a fixed um, definition. Um, and you have also uh, the option to retrieve um, certain parameters from the Active Directory. For in this example, I, I use the locality. So the locality will be retrieved from the AD object and it looks into the locality um, or abbreviated with L, it attribute in the AD object. So this is very interesting for the composition of uh, certificates. Uh, another inter interesting feature is um, uh, handling of duplicate certificate requests. Um, there is a, uh, 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 we have many customers that have a misbehavior at the Windows clients because they, they always request certificates, even if they have uh, valid certificates. Um, so at the end, um, we, have, we have users that have hundreds or thousands of certificates of the same, same template, which makes no sense. For this, we have uh, different options. So we have the op option to block these duplicate certificate requests, or we have the option to uh, pass through the request, but revoke the existing, the old certificates. So these are two, two options that you have, and you have also to, um, uh, the possibility to define exceptions in a, in a file. Okay, um, so if we if we can now go further in the discussion of the subject name, um, there are new requirements that come from the CA browser forum. Um, in the past, the CA browser forum was uh, only focused on, on SSL TLS certificates, but now they also uh, define requirements for SMIME certificates. Um, they have different types, uh, mailbox validated, organization validated, sponsor validated, and individual validated. Um, if, we, if, if we talk about uh, typical certificates, we have, we, we have two, these two um, types. Uh, one is the mailbox validated. Uh, for example, Swiss Sign calls them silver uh, cert as a type silver certificates. Uh, that only contain the email address in the common name and in the um, SAN attribute. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, these sponsor validated certificates that can also contain the organization in the organization field, 
and the given name and uh, the surname. And in this profile, it is required from the CA browser forum that the given name and surname is contained. Um, typically, we are used to, to use the common name. The common name typically has given name, surname in, uh, in, in, in one attribute, but um, they require ex explicitly given name and surname. So the challenge is that given name and surname is often not used in Active Directory. So there is uh, the challenge to generate given name and surname uh, from other attributes that are available, like the common name or the email address. These, these are normally always um, contained in AD. Another challenge is that the names can contain um, uh, characters or numbers that are not allowed by the CE browser form. And uh, I will, uh, in, uh, on one of the next slides, I will explain how we can handle that. Another challenge that comes um, is caused uh, from Microsoft. Um, uh, Microsoft um, offers um, an extension in, uh, in the certificates based on the uh, security identifier. The security identifier is a certain attribute uh, uh, which each Active Directory object contains. So, and um, Microsoft has detected uh, vulnerabilities um, when, when doing um, a certificate-based authentication with old certificates. Uh, they saw that there are, um, there are problems with that. So spoofing attacks were possible. And then J uh, Microsoft decided uh, um, only to uh, accept certificates that contain this security identifier. So Microsoft performed an, an update of the Microsoft CA, ADCS, um, I think in 2022. And from that time, the ADCS only generated certificates with the SID. The SID, originally the plan was to enforce this SID extension for authentication in November this year. So I, I think it was around the uh, beginning of November, but they uh, postponed this to February 2025. But from then, no authentication will be possible with certificates that don't contain this, uh, this OID. So we have two challenges. One is that the CA that issues the certificate uh, must support the SID extension. And we have to fetch the SID from the AD objects and trans transmit them to the CA. And this is what we do now in CDB version 6. So um, if we look um, at the configuration uh, we, uh, we've seen before, uh, so we have now the option to define the, the SID that we say, OK, please, um, retrieve the object zip. This is the name of the SRD in, in Active Directory, and um, put it along with the with the CSR. And then we have other rules. We have the option to um, derive the given name, for example, from the male attribute, or we can derive the surname from the common name attribute. And with this rule, for example, we say, OK, please remove uh, contained uh, numbers. So if we look at, at the Active Directory, for example, if we have a, if we have a user, uh, Hans Meyer, uh, he has a common name, Hans J. Meyer 2, and mail address hans.meyer2 at zakaria.com. So we, with these rules, we can, uh, we can take the, um, Surname from Maya 2, then uh, remove the 2. And at the end, we submit the allowed parameters given name Hans, surname Meyer, and the contained um, SID. By the way, the SID is typically longer than this. Uh, this is just um, to show you as an example. 
Yeah, we have uh, other um, other innovations in 30p uh, version 6. We have extended crypto support for the uh, KP2, or which is called uh, Crypto Next Generation. So we su support KSPs, we support elliptic curves. Uh, we use SHA-2 as the default hash algorithm. In the past, was, this was done with SHA-1, like Microsoft did. And also we replaced the triple dash um, encryption with, um, with common AES uh, encryption. We offer HSM support um, for service CA and the client authentication. And we have an, also an interesting feature because we can, we can validate at 30p if the correct CSP or KSP has been used because you can define in the template which CSP, which KSP should be used. Yeah, then the service CA. So the service CA um, is a built-in CA that is used for serv needed, uh, service certificates for key archive, for example. And we now implemented this uh, commonly as all the other backend CAs. So it's, it's visible as an Active Directory enrollment object, and it can be easily used by, uh, by standard clients, uh, by CertUtil, by CertLife, we have improved crypto support that I explained before, and we have um, an easier handling of creating a service CA and configuring it, and it can now be removed. This was not so easy in the past, but now it can be removed very easy if, if you don't need it anymore. Yeah, we have uh, a couple of other um, um, innovations. We have uh, now uh, a common configuration of the database. So if you have one product installed and configured, the next product will automatically use the same database configuration. We have uh, the option to check for, ups, uh, for software updates in, uh, in CERDP. We have the option to refresh licenses to update the, the license status. We have the option um, for if, if, if you are a large customer, if you have um, uh, much traffic, if you have large log files, then it's very interesting to use this new feature for log rotation. So logs will be um, removed and, and backed, backed up uh, if they reach a certain size. Then we have an additional tool for uh, bulk revocations, which, which can be very, very useful. At the moment, we, are, we have a situation at a customer who has around 10,000 users, and this customer has a new organization name. So they change the organization name. And this means that the public CA says, okay, all old certificates have to be revoked because you are a new organization. And if we talk about 10,000 uh, users, 10,000 certificates, then such a tool is very, very helpful to do these bulk revocations, perhaps not 10,000 in one step, but in, let's say, steps of hundreds or, or, or even thousand users. This is very helpful. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we have also official support for Windows 2022, uh, Windows 11, and ODBC driver 18. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm through now with the new features. Uh, just to summarize it up, we have new uh, CA backends for DigiCert, Global Sign, Sectigo. We have the <clears throat> extended configuration of certificate templates. We um, cover new requirements from Microsoft and the CA browser forum. And we have an interesting server-based or group-triggered auto-enrollment feature for CAs that don't support the template uh, certificate extension. Um, support for new crypto methods and uh, a couple of improvements uh, for the user comfort and for a better software operation. Yeah, 
that was it from my side. So thank you very much for your attention.